temperature left on the eastbound temple. I didn't really get into the hunting arena and start doing that until I became a SEAL sniper and that was part of our training. Oftentimes we'd go to a shooting course where we would be able to hunt in the morning and hunt in the evening. At 12 o'clock, at 12 o'clock. There he is. Underneath us. I think that's some of the best training that you can get. I was in the Navy from 2001 to 2014 and I did five deployments in the Navy, three in the SEAL teams and two in the fleet. Towards the end of my Naval career, I caught the entrepreneurial bug. I got an opportunity to uh, be a partner in a startup and I just loved the challenge. I loved uh, the freedom of it and I loved that the upside was limitless. I've always been the type of guy that likes, likes to go big, you know, and, and that means, unfortunately, it means a lot of failure. I knew I was gonna have to prove a lot of people wrong because when I told a lot of people what I was doing, they, they said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. I was attracted to hog hunting because hogs are really smart. And it is a challenge to hunt them because they do have a sixth sense. You know, you don't have to go out and get a tag. And a lot of people actually really want you to come and hunt them because they're tearing up their land, they're tearing up their crop. A very conservative estimate to ag damage in our state by wild pigs is well over $50 million. And that's very, very conservative. With landowners spending at least $7 million trying to correct the damage or control the pigs causing the problem. But the issue goes deeper than that. Since about 1983, I began working with landowners on wild pig issues here in East Texas. So this has been going on a number of decades at this point. So we're losing the war on wild pigs. They're in direct competition with our native wildlife species. From a human health and safety issue, wild pigs are a big problem. And, and yes, they do carry diseases. They can commonly carry about 15 different diseases, not all at once. But the two main diseases we're concerned with are swine brucellosis and pseudorabies. Pseudorabies can be passed to livestock, also be passed to hunting dogs. Swine brucellosis is a zoonotic. It can actually be transmitted from the pigs directly to humans and cause flu-like symptoms. And once you've got it, you carry it with you the rest of your life. Problem is, you can't tell by looking at a wild pig whether it could be possibly carrying swine brucellosis. You cannot remove enough pigs through sport hunting to impact a pig population. And many, many hunters just don't understand that most efficient way to remove pigs off the landscape is strategic shooting, the use of night vision equipment uh, on firearms at night when the pigs are in the open. But if you had to limit yourself to one technique, it's through aerial shooting from helicopters are going to be the best methods that uh, are available to help a landowner actually decrease the damage. Switch your sides. That'll work. I think one of my favorite parts is to meet the ranchers and meet the cowboys and meet the farmers that own these fields who are asking for help. And you meet them and realize that these guys are up before the sun comes up. They work until the sun goes down and they could have spent months preparing a field and then a band of hogs rolls in and craters that field and just completely destroys it. And it kind of makes you, it makes you feel for them because you know that they don't have all the time in the world. You know that they don't have all the resources in the world. You know how hard these men and women work out here. So when you get an opportunity to help them out a little bit, it feels pretty good.